Hi, welcome to State Space Modeling with Tim. In this lecture series, I will be introducing State Space Modeling to those of you who are starting out with State Space Modeling and would like to find an easy to get through explanation of exactly what is State Space Modeling and its basics. Through several lecture, uh, small tutorial and lecture videos, I will cover all the basics of what State Space Modeling is and how to execute the basics. And this will be covered through plenty of examples, definitions, and some fun facts here and there. So without any further ado, let's get down to it. So what is state space modeling exactly? It is a generalized time domain method. And we focus specifically on the time domain because this is where we can define most of the characteristics of physical systems that we are interested in. It is used for modeling, analysis, and design of systems. So that will be very useful for engineers and any other experts dealing with control systems. And it can be easily adapted for digital computation. This will be evident when we start working with linear algebra, that is matrices and vectors. Okay, so why would we choose to use state space modeling over the um, frequency techniques that we've already learned if you've been doing uh, control systems for a while now. So I've created this table here to just make a comparison of state space methods versus frequency domain methods and hopefully you can see the advantages. So the first one is that um, state space methods are more modern being found in the 1900s as opposed to the more archaic frequency domain methods which are over two centuries old. And um, state space methods can be used for multi-input and multi-output systems as opposed to single input and single output limitations for frequency domain. Nonlinear non-linear time variant systems can also be expressed using state space where only linear and time invariant systems can be um, determined by frequency domain methods. And we can we can easily translate Digit, uh, into digital computations our systems in the state space domain which is the time domain and however it is hard to implement in uh, digital computers the frequency domain methods it is possible but it is way complicated and um, the canonical form uh, shows the behavior of the system in the state space domain while you need a lot of graphing to be done to understand how the system is behaving. This is known as frequency response um, plotting. So here's a little fun fact. Um, the space race during the mid 19, the 1900s uh, forced the introduction of state space modeling because the mechanics were too complex to use frequency domain, uh, frequency techniques. And that's because once you start dealing with uh, extraterrestrial science, um, it is not enough to just use the basic techniques of the basic archaic techniques of uh, frequency domain. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's get on with it. So before we can actually start discussing um, state space modeling, you need to know these basics prior to starting with um, a course such as this. So you need to know basic linear algebra. This is just the basic matrix and vector operations, that should be enough. Uh, secondly, it should be basic control systems, block diagram, tr transfer functions, etc. You should be familiar with those. Otherwise, most of these uh, examples we're going to be covering and the concepts we're going to be covering in this tutorial series are going to be very confusing to you. Thirdly, the Fourier series uh, and Laplace transforms, this should be coming from um, calculus, and, uh, calculus and algebra and all their inversions as well, because we're gonna be going, we're gonna be using Laplace transforms a lot. And lastly, you're gonna need differential equations. We did say we're dealing with dynamic systems, time domain systems, so differential equations are gonna be needed. And you're gonna to need to know their basic operations and we're gonna integrate them with Laplace transforms. Okay, so if you are comfortable with this process, then we can proceed and so let's start off with just understanding exactly how um, state space works or what is the state. And the first lesson is neatly expressed the concept of state. So what is the state of a system? 
the set of variables also known as state variables which at some initial time t0 together with the input variables completely determine the behavior of the system for time t0 is greater or, or equals to or, or time t is greater or equals to t0 and this is a definition coming from the Roland S. Benz Advanced Control Engineering first edition book for those who might be interested. I will be referencing um, credible sources throughout this um, tutorial series for those who might be interested to keep everything credible. Okay, now back to the definition, we say it completely determine um, that the set of variables must completely determine the behavior of the system. This is because you want to have a set number, you want to, you want these uh, state variables to com to completely describe your system in such a way that they, all the, all the characteristics of the system are defined at the end of the model and that everything is dependent on your state variables. Okay, now what is the state variable? This is the smallest number of states required to describe the dynamic nature of the system. They don't have to be measurable. So I have uh, the, everything that is underlined is when I make, when I want to make specific emphasis on it. So the smallest number of states is why should there be a smallest number of states? Because you will find that in most cases for your system that you will have a lot of states, but you want to keep those states minimum to make both the work easy for you. And then also that you can, if you can define your system with the least number of states, then you should be able to, then you should be able to have a very simple model that describes your whole system without it being redundant. And why? why do we talk about the dynamic nature this is again goes back to the idea that we're going to be needing differential equations the time domain um if the time domain as time progresses just as we talked about t naught here t not anything greater than t naught this is the progression of time so that means your system is going to be dynamic in terms of time as time progresses your system evolves and you want your state model to be able to express completely what will look your system over any given time greater than your initial time. Okay, so now we can say, therefore, the state space is the nth dimensional space where n can be your number, your minimum number of state variables, which should be defining your system. You, the nth dimensional space where state variables change as a function of time, and that is our state space. Okay, so now having all of this knowledge, we can go forward and discuss the state vector differential equation. This is in effect the state space model. So let's look at the state vector differential equation. It is made up of actually two equations. And right now on the screen, you can see in black, this is our state equation. And it's just x dot is equals to ax plus bu. And you, I'm going to require you to memorize this because we're going to be using it over and over for different kind of um, applications and different kind of examples and exercises and you're going to realize every time whenever we come up with a state space model this is going to be how we're going to form it so x x dot is the dynamic matrix the dot at the top means that it is uh, the inputs inside are derivatives and as you can see down here in red the dynamic matrix the dynamic matrix or the dynamic vector, because it's a column vector, is made up of state variables. Uh, state variables and the state variables are kept inside the state vector. The state variables are, are derivated here, only only to the first derivative. While here in the state vector, they are not they are in their natural form and not derivated. Okay, so a um, a is the n by n. Uh, system matrix okay it's not really important to memorize that but just know that this a has all the parameters that define your system and then if it is multiplied with your state vector we start to have an idea of how the whole system works okay bu is the n by m control matrix this will be discussed a bit later i don't want to uh, bloat the, the whole lecture with this now and u is your input matrix so for the state equation we are talking about the dynamic matrix linking with the state vector the system matrix 
and your input matrix. So hopefully this will make a bit more sense once we start looking at examples. Okay, and now we've talked about the state equation, we can talk about the output equation. The output equation links the output vector with the input vector and our state vector. So this is very important. So again, uh, I think the most important thing here you should notice is that there is a direct relationship between input, input and output and also the state variables. This is going to be very important when moving forward when we try to find the relationship of the out input to the output. Sometimes you'll notice when we do some examples, we won't be interested in the output. We'll just be interested to find out how the system works. So we'll be focusing a lot on A and its relationship to X and X dot. I hope you can keep that in mind. And these two equations, again, they are going to be very important. So if you could note them down and memorize them, and they shouldn't be that very difficult to memorize so that you know how you must express your state space at any given time for any given example. So using the above, we can start developing state space models for physical dynamic systems. Okay. In the next video, we're going to be taking on a small example, a um, small mechanics example to see how to use what we've already learned to look to develop a state space model for this particular scenario. And um, if you are re 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 reviewing um, state space modeling, you can do this example prior to looking at the next video. Until then, take care.